So this morning in about two hours, I constructed a new mobile solar power system. And this is probably the best bang for your buck and bare bones system around. This will beat everything on the market for the price and it's extremely powerful. And the reason I constructed this is to show how people can do a DIY version of the recent solar generators that we have been testing because they have been failing miserably. And this thing is a hundred times better for like half the price. So first, this system has 2,400 watt hours with lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour cells in an 8S configuration. And these cells are managed by the SBMS by Electrodocus. This is a solar battery management system and it uses the information from the individual cell voltages and our coulomb meter for high and low voltage disconnect. And then we also have a circuit breaker right here which is 125 amps, which is perfect for our inverter charger up here. And we're just using a basic LV2424 by MPP Solar. So this can do a max continuous discharge rating of 2.4 kilowatts. It also has AC charging up to 60 amps at 24 volts. So that's around 1400 watts. And then it can also handle 1900 watts of solar input at a max voltage of 115 volts. And we're actually controlling this inverter charger with two wires that go to the on and off switch that are wired in series. And that goes to one of the control outputs on the SBMS. If you want to learn more, watch my other video where I go into more details on how that works. And on the bottom of our all-in-one inverter charger system, we have an AC input with a common ground, line one and neutral. And then we have an AC output with line one and neutral over here. So this wire goes out to a male prong so you can plug it into the wall and use an AC charger. And then this one goes to a female prong so we can actually power loads or run a small AC distribution panel with this AC output. And with this inverter charger, you can put them into parallel and run a split phase output if you wish. And then we have the main battery connection inputs and also the PV input. This is where you put your solar panel cables for a single series string if you do not exceed the max input voltage limit. So it's a pretty simple system. Let's check out the Electrodocus SBMS and see what's going on. And I'm starting to like this system a lot. It works really well once you get it configured. So let's go to the monitoring section and you can see our individual cell voltages, the battery nominal voltage, the cell delta or the difference between the highest and lowest cell, and then how many amps are going in or out of the battery. Right now we are consuming current, so you'll see a negative in front of it. And then we have PV2, I'm not using that shunt, I didn't set up any of this other stuff. Um, and then we have a state of charge meter down here. So right now we're at 99% because I just charged up the battery. And you have other monitoring graphs. So super interesting, you can also go to the parameter settings and this takes a while to set up, but once it's set up, it will last for months and you'll be good to go. We have 100 amp hours with eight cells in series configuration, and then it shows you how to wire it up down here. Anyways, super cool and it works perfectly. We have an extension cord on this side for charging. So if I plug this into a wall, it will start charging instantly. And right now it's charging and I have it set to 40 amps. So this can charge actually up to 60 amps, but because of the size of battery that I'm using, I prefer charging at 40 amps to avoid the effects of fast charging degradation. Also, the high voltage disconnect is not controlled by the SBMS and the inverter charger. You could use solid state relays, but I would rather not. What I prefer to do is top balance the pack by programming the SBMS to do that. And then once it's at the top and everything's at like 3.4 to 3.5 volts, then I manually set the absorption. And right now it's charging up to 28.2 volts and it works perfectly. Now on the other side of the system, we have a discharge AC cord. So if I want to use this, the inverter needs to be on. So what I need to do is turn on the switch that is in series with the Electrodocus, and now the inverter output is on. Right now AC input is connected, so it's doing a bypass. Um, I could run a load off of this, but it'd be the same as powering it off of my house. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect that one and then plug a load into this one. So it's hooked up, we just need to turn it on and connect it to the test load. My car is locked, I'll be right back, hold on. <laughs> it's charging, it's actually doing it. Wow, check that out you guys. And right now we're charging at 12 amps, which is not that impressive. I wish we had a split phase output for this test, but it's doing it. By the way, this whole system is held together with zip ties. 
I was not joking when I said I built this in two hours. And unlike the other junk that we've been reviewing lately, this actually will work for years and years. The weakest link in the system is the MPP inverter though. That board would probably be the first to fail. But everything else on here, there are no FETs to burn out for the disconnect. We're using a communication signal. So yeah, this should be able to run for a long time. And the SPMS says we're pulling 59 amps. So let's get out our clamp meter and make sure that that's accurate. We have our Klein meter and we're gonna set it to DC and then put it over one of the main battery cables and we're pulling 59 amps. So it matches what it says on the SBMS. That means our current calibration is correct. So we're gonna let the car charge for about an hour or two and then we'll come back. So the low voltage disconnect works, now we're going to charge it back up again. And now we're charging at 26 amps, it will take a few minutes to reach that max 40 amp charge rate, but everything works perfectly. Now that we've done some basic testing, let's talk about the price of this system. So with this hand cart that I bought from Costco, the inverter, and everything else that you see here, it's $1,906. But the big difference between this and other commercially available solar generators is that you have a 12 volt output. So if you wish to have a 12 volt output, you're gonna have to use a step down converter or a buck converter. So what this does is takes the 24 volt battery nominal from this system and converts it to 13.8 volts at 40 amps. So you could use this converter to supply a fuse block and run your 12 volt appliances. I have no use for this anymore when I was in the RVs and vans. I would have converters for all of my higher voltage systems. But nowadays I just run everything through the inverter and it's much more efficient to use a DC converter than to use an inverter if you can power your appliances with it. So these are typically four to six percent loss. These are like 15 to 20 percent loss. But because solar panels are so cheap, you could just throw up another panel and then run your inverter all day long. This one actually has a horrible standby consumption and is probably the biggest downside of this entire system. It's like 40 or 45 watts. So make sure that you have a very large solar panel array connected to this. The best way to do this for cheap is to buy used solar panels. This is because even though they have a 20 year warranty guarantee for an 80% output, typically they're still outputting 90% at 30 years. So this is a very conservative warranty on the market these days. Besides that, it is a pretty nice system. You can actually expand this. You can put nine of these in parallel with split phase output or a three phase output. So you could run your house off of this. You could also add more batteries to this as large as you wish. You could have multiple 8S configuration batteries with their own BMS connected in parallel, or you can make a very large battery bank. But if you wanna keep it mobile, this is a great size. So eight 100 amp hour cells, it's like $1,000. And it just so happens that this size battery and its discharge C rate matches this inverter perfectly. So the max discharge continuous of this is 2,400 watts. And because this is a 2,400 watt hour battery, that means at max rate it will be one C, which is great. So these components are matched actually really well so that it will last a very long time. Another downside is the size and the weight. This thing is huge. I mean, this thing's like, I don't know, 80 or 100 pounds. But if you want something that will last a long time, like these batteries are great for handling vibrations. They might weigh more, but they're extremely durable and that's why I like them. Also, it's modular, so if you wanna swap something out, these are serviceable. So if the inverter board craps out on you or the MPPT, you can swap out that board or you can repair it yourself. So it is held together with electrical tape and zip ties but it works really well. I mean, I already had all of this stuff programmed for my last system, so I didn't really have to do anything. But yeah, for an intermediate level system, I think that this is great. For the price, you cannot beat it. There is no way. If you got this size inverter as a Victron, you're gonna spend $1,500. If you buy these cells, but as in drop-in replacement, you're gonna spend like double that money. But if you wanna make this more beginner friendly and cheap, you could use Calb cells and then use a Dally BMS. You will not have low temperature disconnect, but when matched with this inverter, it would be the cheapest system around. I mean, that thing would be like $1,500 and it would, literally destroy everything else on the market. I like the fortune cells for my projects because they're so easy to construct with, they're dependable and they have a long cycle life. And this system should get 3,000 to 5,000 cycles, 
which is around like 13 years of cycling it every single day. But because we have the SBMS, we can change the cycling bandwidth and we could discharge down to 20% and up to 80% and this will easily last 10,000 cycles. The proof that I have with that is transportation studies on charge cycle life with lithium iron phosphate and Simplify, they modify their cycling bandwidth for lithium iron phosphate and they have a 10,000 cycle guarantee for their rated capacity. So I think it's very easy for most lithium iron phosphate batteries to get crazy cycle life numbers. And theoretically, you could run it for like 26 years or something like that. But I think this inverter would crap out well before any of these batteries or other components down here would. If you like this system, check out the page on my website that I'm gonna build for it. You can learn how to build it. There's gonna be a schematic. It's gonna have nice little pictures and some links for all of these products that are affiliated. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you later. Bye.